presentation, we're going to give you some tips for starting seeds successfully. This info will apply to starting seeds indoors and direct sowing seeds into your gardens. When you receive seeds from us, we divvy them up into little packets like this, give you the instructions that come with them, and then it's up to you to try to nurture those seeds into plants. We want to give you a little bit more instruction if you're new to seed starting, but even if you're an experienced seed starter, you might pick up some new tips. So, uh, first with the seed packet, we will look at a few different ones. These are the seeds we're going to start today. So we'll start with that. Violets or violas or pansies are known to be grown early in the spring. And in order to get a plant ready at the beginning of April or even earlier, you really have to start those seeds quite a bit in advance. So different seed companies kind of provide different levels of information. The Bible, Johnny Select Seeds, and they have all their info online as well. So even if I haven't ordered a seed from them, I'll often look at what their growing instructions are, if they have it. They don't have everything, but they have a lot of information. The first thing you're gonna look for with the seeds that you have is whether they want to be started indoors or not. Some plants prefer to get that head start or can tolerate getting that head start. Other plants really prefer to be planted, their seeds planted in the place that they're gonna grow. Um, they don't wanna be transplanted. It doesn't benefit them at all to get a head start. Some plants don't care. They'll go either way. And it really just depends on the timing and the space that you have to grow. So specifically with violas, you can really do either. But again, because they do well in the cool temperatures of spring, we're going to sow them early, just so then we can take advantage of the fact that they like our cool spring. Nasturtiums, for instance, you'll see on their seed packet, they'll say, um, sowing outdoors recommended. So if possible, that's the way we wanna grow those. But it also has sowing indoor uh, instructions as well. Um, but the, they really prefer um, to start outdoors. If there is a recommendation one way or another, you'll be most successful if you follow that recommendation. The violas, we've decided we are gonna start early, start indoors, so then you look at the timing. Um, some plants don't tolerate any cold, and so those wouldn't be able to be put outside until after our last frost. Others can tolerate some cool, and so we can put those out, like the violas, we can put out before our last frost. Our USDA growing zone is seven, which puts us at an average last frost date around April 15th. That of course changes by the year, and it is just an average. So uh, the violas in particular recommend starting 10 to 12 weeks prior to the last hard frost. So if we think last hard frost is around April 15th and you count back, um, that'll give you when you can start these. As typical, Baker Creek doesn't really have that specificity of information. <laughs> Just do that. And then our, our favorite Johnny's says to sow eight to 12 weeks before planting out. And transplants can go out when light frost is still possible. So we have kind of three pieces of information that we can kind of piece together to figure out when to start these and then when to put them out. We decided we're growing indoors, we figured out when, now we actually have to look at the seeds and how to put them in the soil and how to make that, you know, how to make it work. So a key piece of information there is the depth. Planting depth for seeds also varies widely. Some require darkness and therefore need a very opaque covering of soil in order to germinate. Others require light, so you have to be very careful to not cover them with the soil. And then I would say most seeds are somewhere in between, but that is pretty critical, particularly for those seeds that either require light or require darkness. If you don't give them what they want, they just won't uh, germinate or will germinate very poorly. Another good thing that is on some seed packets is some idea of how long it takes to germinate. It gives you some idea of how long you might be waiting and how long you wanna keep the conditions 
um, optimum for that seed germination. I have a little experiment here that I want to share with you. If you do have seeds, either from, from us or from other parts of your life, you have seeds from prior growing years, and you're not sure if they are any good anymore, you can do a germination test, which is kind of like the, you know, middle school science experiment or elementary school science experiment. Take a few of the seeds that you're curious about, get a moistened paper towel, and put the seeds in the paper towel. And it's, it's like wet, but not dripping. And then you would put the seeds inside a Ziploc bag or another closed container and put it in a warm place. So you, you kind of create this little cocoon environment and you can see whether they germinate or not. So it looks like out of 10 seeds, we had three that didn't germinate at all. Um, so that's not that bad. I mean, that's pretty good. Uh, although these seeds are several years old, still getting, you know, 70% germination, which is great. Um, so I'll definitely keep these seeds. And this took about a week. So that's how long it took to get results. Although if I look back at the seed packets for some of the ones that didn't germinate yet, I might find that actually they typically take 10 to 20 days to germinate. So maybe I need to put those back in the warm spot and um, try them for a little bit longer. But Chinese forget me not, success. So I encourage you guys that you have old seeds and really want to know ahead of time how well they will germinate to use a test like this. A reason to do this, and then conversely a reason not to bother, <laughs> is if you, if you have limited space for starting seeds, um, you wanna make sure that you're using it in the best way or most efficient way you can. Sometimes you'll also get information about what temperature uh, the plants wanna germinate at. And I would say that probably the most common temperature is about 70 degrees, which I don't know about you, but my house in the winter is never at 70 degrees. That's a thing to, to keep in mind. Um, oftentimes it'll also tell you about spacing. That really comes into play later and when you're planting them out in the garden. Um, so keep that information, but probably don't need it right now. Here we've covered the basics of what you can expect to see on a seed packet. There may still be more terminology that is unclear and we'll try to provide further resources. Things like the definition of light frost versus hard frost, or my favorite is the timing of when seeds can be direct sown in early spring, when the soil can be worked. What does that even mean? So we'll put together some more resources and help define some of those terms that will help you get even more out of the seed packet information. So the seeds you'll get from us um, will be individually packed. Uh, we break up the, the bigger seed packs into smaller little portions. And then we include growing instructions, a copy of the, um, the seed pack that the, the seeds came from so that you know the variety and all of this information about growing that we've just talked about. Um, and as I said uh, before, the if this seed packet that came with these seeds doesn't have all the information we talked about, get online and I would try Johnny's first and then try some other seed companies to see if you can get, get all of those pieces of information. Thanks for listening. Let's go get planting.